Hello, how are you? Today, we're going to be talking about the book of Hosea. Hosea is about God's glory through salvation and judgment. It tells about Israel, who's a kingdom that turned away from God. So, in the book of Hosea, God used Hosea to marry a prostitute named Gomer. And he used that relationship to show that Gomer, Hosea, and God were basically with Israel was the same. So the way that Gomer cheated on her husband, Hosea, God felt the same way about Israel because Israel turned its back on God. Uh, they started worshiping uh, idols, uh, which God felt betrayed, and it, it was considered an adulterous sin, just as Gomer was uh, cheating on her husband, Hosea. So God used the marriage uh, with Hosea and Gomer to show his love for his people of Israel by comparing himself to Hosea. And uh, his wife, Gomer, you know, of course we all know she committed uh, adultery. And so what he was trying to get across to his people of Israel is the message of repentance and salvation. So, God's relationship with Israel is seen through the story of Hosea, if you read uh, 1 and 3. And since Hosea's wife was unfaithful, just like Israel was unfaithful to God, which would be in Hosea 1 verse 20, okay? So, with all that being said, Hosea and, and Gomer had some children, uh, and... Gomer left Hosea and went back to prostitute. So to show his love in the relationship, God told Hosea to go back and and get his wife. So now we got to think back because in the beginning, God spoke to Hosea and told him to marry a prostitute because that was his way of showing his love to uh Israel, as Hosea was showing his love uh, to his wife. So God used Hosea also to present his plan for Israel. He used him to reveal the punishment. And then you see all this in Hosea 8 to 10. And when he was talking about idolatry, that was in Hosea 4 and 7. So God also promises Israel restoration. So you would find that in Hosea 14. So these are very important in their own way because this shows the importance of salvation and judgment and how God used uh, Hosea and Gomer as an example to get his point across to Israel. So, you know, that that's how it went. So do we also want to examine um, the book of Daniel. Uh, the book of Daniel tells how God's sovereignty, you know, he, he's just God's sovereign. He over everything. I mean, the whole entire world. Uh, the When Daniel uh, was standing firm on his beliefs after Nebuchadnezzar took over Israel, you know, and then we say about Daniel standing firm on his belief, that'll be in Daniel uh, chapter 1, verse 8 through 16, and then chapter 6, 
8 through 16. Uh, Daniel was standing firm on what he believed in as far as his faith with the Lord. And so Nebuchadnezzar was trying to get him to change to come his face, but he stayed firm with his beliefs. So they threw him in the lion's den. They threw him in the furnace because they passed the law that said it was it was against the law to to worship any other god but God. So they were back to their idolatry. So Daniel and his three friends were put into the lion's den, but because they held their faith and they would not give in, uh, they just kept their faith and Nebuchadnezzar them and they, they knew they put three people in the, into the furnace, but when they looked in there, they saw four and now a one of them was singed, burned or anything. So God delivered Daniel and his friends from the lion's den. Now this was relevant because it showed that they were delivered from the lion's den and the forces of evil. And you can find that in Daniel chapter three, uh, verses 23 to 30, uh, chapter six, 19 to 23, uh, chapter seven, nine to 22. So in conclusion, this was very important because it showed the sovereignty of God. It showed that while everybody else were were worshiping these idols and doing all the things that Nebuchadnezzar had did in Daniel, God showed them that he was still in control and that he controlled everything in, in the entire world and that that was the true God, the one and only God that they should be worshiping. So I want to thank you for staying with me for just a little bit uh, in doing this. So thank you. You have a very blessed day, and I look forward to doing this again so we can learn together.